English for Kids Training Level 1 or 6 years and younger. So the content of this training, uh, we will talk about on how are we going to handle this kind of student. And then for the pre-demo later, just like what I've mentioned in your homework, I guess you're done with your homework, mm -hmm. right? It's just a 10-minute class. Yes. You don't have to finish the whole book. I'm begging you. <laughs> don't make it 25 <laughs> minutes, okay? It's just 10 minutes. Three minutes for the introduction, okay. four minutes for the... Um, Four minutes for the lesson proper and then three minutes again for the recap okay next is the feedback okay. uh, after your pre-demo i'm going to give you detailed feedback on how you did during your pre-demo okay so later on you will be the teacher and i will be the student since you're my only student for today <laughs> Okay. Next, for the final demo, after this training, uh, you have to submit uh, submit one of your or you actually there are two options for the final demo. One is you can choose one of the best recording, one of the best classes that you have here in Arkansas, and then send me uh, the the copy, or you can send the class ID to your TM, and then send it to oh, me okay. uh, via MP4, and then. I will send it to your uh, to the QA evaluator to to evaluate it. Okay? okay, and then for the final reminders on how we can be great teachers here on Akansok. Okay, next is all right. So the who? So who are the level one students? They are zero beginners and they are new to the English language. So in business high, that they know nothing in the English language. Most of them, they are just starting to learn the language. So they are zero beginners, not like EFK Su. Uh, EFK Su, they already know how to express themselves already, right? Next is, yes. they are six years and younger. Actually, the company um, that like three to six years old, but there are many teachers who have experience to have a five-month-old baby, a one-year-old baby, what? like <laughs> Yes, you will never know how young. <laughs> Really? <laughs> just imagine so they kept on singing the whole 25 minute of the class <laughs> i guess that that was so cute but oh my goodness i'm not a good singer <laughs> yeah so yeah so you will never know how young is the student that you are going to handle so you have to be ready okay for this kind of students next is they got the shortest attention span, so they keep on roaming around, running around. They, they don't want to listen to you, right? Sometimes you, you want to, to grab them in a camera and then throw them outside the window. <laughs> Just kidding. You have to love them. <laughs> yes, and then they are also visual learners. So from the word itself, visual, so they learn from what they see, right? So children nowadays are really good in watching. Like just like my son, I, I have a seven-year-old boy, and he started to speak oh. the language at the age of three. Yes, he started watching Peppa Pig at the age of four months. Yes, so he speaks oh. uh, British English. So literally, wow. literally, <laughs> literally, <laughs> my <mine> bleed <laughs> whenever. <laughs> Yeah, there are some words that oh I cannot understand. Uh, there are some words <laughs> that he he uses in British English, and I couldn't understand. But, but whenever, but, but when I when I check it in the dictionary, it really exists. Like oh, it's really a shame for, <laughs> for a mother who could not understand his, her own son. Right? It's just a pity. Oh. I should watch a lot of Peppa Pig too. Yeah, that's too bad. And uh, they respond well to songs, videos, and games. Yes, they love to sing and they like they, they love to dance, right? But of course, there are some parents that no, 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 no song like that. So, um, just just move on to the to the lesson like that. So you you know that customers are always right, and if customers are wrong, go back to rule number one. So they are always right. <laughs> <laughs> so if they don't want if they don't want songs, just move forward with your lesson as long as the evaluator uh, saw and uh, heard that you want to play a song okay and then how are we going to teach them that's really a big question right yes so they are especially for the parsing students like what is your name what is your name so they keep on repeating what you are saying right so how did yes. you handle this kind of students yeah for you in your experience have you handled this kind of uh, students yeah i 
I do. Uh, I use stuffed toys and mm-hmm. play like they're talking to each other, mm-hmm. so that um, <laughs> amazing. Yes, okay. I yes. Sometimes mm-hmm. it works. Sometimes it doesn't. It doesn't. <laughs> oh, okay. Any other technique that you have used for imparting students? Um. Oh, I think from that's the, it. That's it. That's from the video that you have seen, mm-hmm. that you have watched. Any? Oh, um, from the video. Um, mm-hmm. oh, they use stuffed toys as well, and sometimes for giving instructions. Mm-hmm. Um, they give instructions in Chinese, or they use TPR, like mm-hmm. or giving a microphone. Mm, the fake microphone, the, right? So we that's yeah. using realis, right? Just a second. Yes. I, I thought my phone is ringing. I'm sorry. <laughs> 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 okay. Yes. So uh, yes, that's that's correct. Actually, this is the first time I heard that using role playing, you are using uh, through. Uh, what they call this? Uh, stew puppets. Because most of the teachers ah. that they that I have heard that I have uh, what they call this ask, they are just using one puppet and they are talking to the puppet itself. Like, what is your name? And then face it to the student. Like, what is your name? And then you can change your voice like that. But you oh. you are using two puppets. I'm using wow. two puppets. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> so this is the I first did. time I heard him. <laughs> yes, and. Then, so actually, we have four techniques. So the first one is the TPR or the total physical responses. So this one, we use the body movements and the body gestures, uh, like uh, pointing your fingers to your lips, like, can you say, or can you please say, like that. So uh, pointing your, your index finger to your lips means you want the student to say something from their own. So that would, that would help, okay? TPR for the rest of the class, not just on the start of the class, until the end of the class. And then, number two, we mm-hmm. have the role-playing, just like what you are using. Oh. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> I am talking to my son. <laughs> okay, so role-playing, okay. uh, the second one, and then uh, that's just like what you are doing, uh, using uh, the role-playing, using the puppets. And then, uh, the next one is... The Chinese translation. So this is my best friend. <laughs> yes, I love Chinese <laughs> translations. <laughs> but during my time, uh, we don't have uh, Chinese translations yet. We don't have class in. We don't have a classroom uh, six years ago. So we are using um, Skype. I'm not familiar. I'm, I'm not sure if you're still familiar with Skype. The the blue, <laughs> the blue. I don't know. Um. But- well, yes. I use it, but not for um, not for teaching. <laughs> yeah, that's so. That's what we are using before. <laughs> so it was really hard for us to to yeah to teach. Not like you nowadays. You uh, are you are so lucky, teacher, because nowadays you have the class in, you have the whiteboard uh, like that. So yeah, it's just amazing. I envy you actually. <laughs> <laughs> so next is the Chinese phrases and sentences. For the Chinese translation, uh, I think last in a classroom, you have the built-in translator translations in, uh, translators inside the uh, the class in right. Um, in the A classroom. Not A classroom only. Um, class in you don't have. Yes. Oh, I see. Uh, we don't have it. Okay, I see. So for me, like six years ago, I'm using uh, Google translators <laughs> during my time. <laughs> And then, of course, the last one, the Chinese phrases and sentences. If really the student could not understand you, if really the student is so young that could not read Chinese characters yet, and then Chinese phrases and sentences is the must, okay? So you can speak even a single word or sentences or phrase for the, so, so that the student will understand you, right? It's just a pity yes. that in my six years of teaching online, I never learned how to speak even a single word in Chinese. <laughs> <laughs> but I am teaching you because I want you to learn <laughs> so that <laughs> you can use this technique someday, okay? Or one of your classes, okay? Next, okay. Uh, I hope you will learn from my mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> and you take it from my experience. Okay, next is the class flow. So in every lessons that we have, whether it's CFA 1, 2, and 3, we have the class flow. The class flow is our guide on how are we going to start the lesson until uh, up to like how are we going to end the lesson. So we have three parts. So the first one is the introduction. So how many minutes do we usually conduct, conduct the introduction? 
Uh, two to three minutes. Okay, you're probably good. For the regular students. So that's uh, two to three minutes uh. for the regular students. And then trial classes, we have four to five minutes. Trial classes are not yet enrolled here in Arkansas, so we encourage to, or we encourage them to to book lessons with us. So we extend mm -hmm. the introduction to five minutes, okay? And then for the lesson proper, we have 10 to 15 minutes, 10 to 15 minutes, and that is the standard one. And then for the wrap-up, it's three minutes again. So it's just changing in the introduction part, uh, two to three for the regular and five for the trial, okay? And then 10 minutes, 10 to 15 minutes for the lesson proper. Any questions for the class flow? Uh, no. Not so far. Okay, so I will divide the class flow into three. So we have the introduction pointers. So be guided and remind our teacher that in every number that you will see here, that means to say that it is graded in the QA evaluation scorecard. Okay, so whether you like it or you like it, you have to like it. You have to include this in your <laughs> lesson. Okay, uh, of course, you can add up. You can add from this um, standard class flow. But you cannot omit, you cannot remove anything because you are graded step by step until the end of the class. Okay? So this is our it's like this okay. is our Bible. We have to we have to follow it religiously. <laughs> Seriously. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay, so number one is uh, greetings, you say hi and hello to the to the students and say to say hi to the parents as well. Why do we have to say hi to the parents as well? What do you think is the reason? Uh uh, to you, I um to make the parents comfortable with us. Mm -hmm. Not sure, like a courtesy. Yeah, of course, it's like a sign of respect for them, right? Because they are the one mm -hmm. booking our lessons and they are the one giving us five stars. So might oh. as well say hi to them. Oh right? yes. <laughs> and, uh, yes. Uh, whether you like it or you like it, they are always on the side of the student, right? Even if you cannot see them, they are always looking on you. <laughs> <laughs> they are checking yes. checking your lessons, especially these teenagers, <laughs> like six years and younger students. Of course, they don't know how to navigate the computer yet, so they are the, the parent. The parents are always on the side of the student. Sometimes you will hear them. Uh, you will hear them uh, on the lessons, like uh, answering your questions, like it's stuck, it's stuck. Now they are whispering the answer, right? Yes, <laughs> yes, they are our student actually. <laughs> So let's say hi to the parents as well. It's just funny, but I love it when I hear parents <laughs> answering my questions. <laughs> and then we have to do the, te the technical checkup. Can you see me? Can you hear me? Like that. So this is really, really important. So technical check. You have to check whether the student, the student can hear you or can see you. Okay. Next is number three. We have the introduction of the self and the student. No, don't make it so long, teacher. I'm begging you. This is not your time to shine. <laughs> it is the student's time to shine, okay? So always ask the age of the student. Actually, the age is more important than the name. <laughs> it's just funny because uh, okay. this, this, is, uh, this is for the evaluation purposes. Uh, if, uh, because we have, we have age bracket for each uh, level, right? For EFK1, we have six years and younger. For EFK2, we have seven to 12 years old. So if the evaluator heard that this student falls on the bracket of seven to 12 years old, you will be disqualified, right? So you have to make sure that you ask the age of the student, six years and younger, okay? Okay. And then number four in building rapport. So why do we need to build rapport, teacher Pia? Um, because, uh, because we'll be teaching the student like for 25 minutes. So, mm -hmm. um, we have to keep them interested in us. Mm -hmm. Is that right? So <laughs> we have to get their attention, uh, get their attention. And at the same time, you build a rapport because you want to build connection with your student. You want them to make, uh, mm -hmm. you want them to feel that you are a friend not a terror teacher. Building connection is like uh, breaking the ice between you and the student. Asking simple questions like, how do you feel today? Have you had your dinner now? What, what have you had for dinner? Like that, or breakfast or lunch? How's the weather now in China? Like that. So simple questions that can open up, that can, what do you call this? That can let or let the student feel that you are a friend, okay? And also teacher, okay. 
you don't have to ask a lot of proper questions. This is one of the mistakes or one of the biggest mistakes that I heard from my trainees. You know what? In my six years of teaching, you don't have to ask a lot of proper questions. Like, yes, mm -hmm. there are a lot of proper questions, but one question is more than enough, right? So you have to dig into the answer of the student itself. Like, for example, uh, how are you today? I'm fine or I'm sad, teacher. Why are you sad? Like that. So you have to dig into the answer itself. You have to ask follow-up question from the answer of the student because you're building connection, right? It's not just like, I'm sad, teacher. Okay, how's the weather now in China? It's like you're jumping to the <laughs> other, other question without even building connection with the student, right? So a teacher, as a teacher, you have to learn the art of asking questions. Okay, you have to feel the feeling of your student, even if he's happy, like, why are you happy today? Like that. So you have to feel the student's answer. Okay. Okay. And then number five, the warm up activity, simple yet enjoyable songs, make it connected with the lesson. And my dear teacher that simple yet enjoyable songs, they are like four, they are second to the highest uh, what do you call this? Second to the highest when it comes to grading you. So you have to include it, okay? So it's four points in the QA evaluation scorecard. So you have to play a song that is related to the topic. But later for the for the pre-demo, since just it's just a 10-minute class, so you can play like at least 10 seconds or 20 seconds song, okay? You don't have to finish the whole book. I just want to hear that you played one song, okay? Okay. Okay. Next oh. is the lesson proper. So after playing a song, you have to do the lead-in activity. So for the lead-in activity, you have to introduce the lesson. So like, for example, in uh, asking or introducing uh, the topic, you can ask simple questions. Like, for example, the topic for today is all about colors. Oh, what is the color of my clothes? Like that. So you are already giving the idea to the student, like, uh, the topic for today will be about clothes, right? And then you have to confirm that you do have the same book with the student because you cannot move forward if you have different book with the student, okay? They have studied the, the lesson for the whole day before facing you face-to-face. -face. So you have to confirm that you do have the same book. Next is number two, repeat after me technique. This is just a maximum of the three times don't make it 10 times teacher that's kind of boring already <laughs> because i i evaluated okay. i evaluated one teach teacher from here and then she kept on asking the same question like what is your name what is your name you know what the mother got angry she got bored she dropped the call and then this teacher got a negative remark <laughs> i don't want that to happen uh to you teacher we have a rule that's just up to three times okay and they are not stupid at all okay. that's why that's why we have the Chinese translation and the Chinese phrases and sentences, right? If still the student couldn't understand you, just say very good and move forward. You don't have to you don't have to stock yourself up in just one question for the rest of the twenty five minute class. Okay. Next okay. is Number three, the knowledge extension. So for the knowledge extension, extension from the word itself, we have to extend the knowledge. Okay. Do not just be by the book. Do not just rely on the book. Do not just teach what is on the book. You have to explore. Mm -hmm. You have to expound the lesson itself. And uh, you have to teach outside the box. Yeah, teach outside the book. And then you can you can include uh, some new words, like simple words, like verbs, like jump, uh, what they call this, uh, stand up, like that. So simple words that are, um, what they call this, applicable for EFK1 students. And then you can also add colors like that, teaching them colors. Like, for example, the topic for today is all about cars. But what is the color of the car? It's an orange car, teacher. So you are including things that are not written in the book, right? And also spelling. What's the spelling of train? Like that. So you have to include things that are not written in the book. Number four, use props, realities, toys, pictures, videos, and medicam at least two, Okay. For EFK2, at least three, but for EFK1, at least two, and you can choose from this. Realias, we have like the, the fake microphone or, or anything that you can grab near you, uh, and it, like a pen or a paper or anything that can that can help you with your lesson. Uh, just just grab it in your, 
or on your side like that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Anything that can help you. Uh, except knife. <laughs> something, <laughs> something that is dangerous oh, no. or gone. Oh my god, you will be the, you will be, <laughs> you will be ter- terminated right away. Terminated. <laughs> Oh yeah, I, I heard one of why well, I, I I've seen like one teacher from other companies. <laughs> she used like uh, I don't know if it's a knife or what. Uh, it's just something that is dangerous too for the for the student, and then she used it as a realia. <laughs> right away, oh, she yeah. got fired the next day. <laughs> <laughs> so I hope, teacher, that you will use it well. You have to use the realia as well. Make yes. sure that it's applicable. There are no for- knives here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so you have to use it what is applicable for efk1 okay, okay. <laughs> and then toys like toys teddy bears puppets like that pictures flashcards of uh, videos and many cam like that so many cam is already one so you can choose any of this okay so at least two and then you, ha- you also you have to utilize the chat box the evaluator wants to see that you are typing on the chat box and you have to wa- maximize the whiteboard And then number five, giving rewards. And in giving rewards, uh, you have to make it digital and non-digital, okay? So digital are the things that they have seen all over Akadsok. These are the things that uh, the rewards that they have seen all over their teachers, most of their teachers. So making your own non-digital reward system will make them feel that I am a friend or like I'm unique to this teacher because she gave me a unique reward, okay? So try to okay. try to... Uh, make like cutouts of stars, cookies, candies, donuts, pizzas, whatsoever, as long that it it looks like a reward, okay? And then okay. give them generously. Yes, I had a student before. He was crying, teacher. Why you just give me final reward? I'm looking forward for the the reward during the lesson itself. So I'm gonna give them generously, okay? <laughs> Do not be stingy. <laughs> Give them a lot, especially if this student is really a good student. Always give them a lot of rewards every now and then. And then add some activities. Of course, these activities are applicable for um, students that are already uh, advanced learners. Yes, they are six years and younger, but there are some students that are already advanced learners. Yes, they have been, they have been studying English for a long time, so we cannot underestimate them. Okay, so sometimes you will finish the lesson mm-hmm. less than 25 minutes, like 10 to 15 minutes. But it's a big no-no if you will end the class less than 25 minutes. Okay? So we have okay. to add things that can uh, that can that you can use to make it 25 minutes. Okay. And then uh, this. One- oh. Um, yes. Can I ask a question? Yes. Uh, how much time can we extend? Mm, extend for what? For the 25 um, minute class? Yes. Oh, it's up to you. <laughs> but oh. you should. <laughs> but, no, but because for me, when I was uh, when I was a teacher here, if I really like the student, and if he is my last student, like I don't have any classes uh, yeah. after his class, I do extend after 30 minutes, <laughs> 30 oh. to 35 minutes, like that. If I really like the student, it depends. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. I was thinking like five minutes. <laughs> so. <laughs> It's okay as long anymore. as long that it will not affect your next class okay because okay. if you have a yeah my son is laughing yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yes it's up to you as long as it will not affect anything or any classes right after that class okay so i only extend classes at the end or of my my last lessons like that and usually uh, chinese people they are really uh, time conscious <laughs> they they really manage their time sometimes when when you oh. extend your when you extend your lessons with them teachers already time <laughs> they will remind you that <laughs> yeah, that's it's already time <laughs> like that so you don't have to worry about that and then So we can add up some drilling okay. methods uh, like for example synonyms and antonyms like that or sentence construction For the sentence construction, you can you, you can scramble the words, and the student will make it in a complete thought or in a complete sentence like that. And then you can add up some games like puzzles, maze like that. And then you can sing, you can dance, whatever you want. <laughs> you can draw if you <laughs> want to, as long that you will finish the 25 minute mark. Okay. Next is the okay. the, the wrap up. So this is the last part. 
So this is one of the biggest sins of teachers. Yes, they don't like to do it or they don't want to do it or they forget to do it. <laughs> so it's a big no-no. You have to finish it whether you like it or you like it. Okay. And then if you think that you only have five minutes left in your lesson, see to it that you tell the student that, oh, Lily, I still want to talk to you, but we're running out of time. Let's now move on to the review part and talk about the things that you have learned for today. Okay. So you have to lead the student to the review part. Number two, the feedback and the suggestion. Yes, feedback, make it as detailed as possible. Also for the suggestions, okay? So feedback and suggestions, uh, for the feedback, I want you to give the student the, the correction of some mispronounced words, correction of grammar lapses, like that. And then for the suggestions, do not give them generic suggestions like uh, read a lot of books. Watch a lot of movies like that. There are so many movies in the world, my dear teacher. So you have to give them the title of the book and the title of the movie that they should watch, right? Oh. So make it as detailed as possible. And make sure that it is connected with the student's um, uh, evaluation. Like, for example, the student is re really not good in pronouncing words or listening or listening skills. The student has a has a poor uh, listening skill. So you can you can suggest to the student like uh, sing a lot of songs. Do you want do you want British accent? Sing a lot sing a lot of songs of Adele. <laughs> if you want American accent, <laughs> yeah, try to sing a lot of songs of Miley Cyrus. <laughs> so <laughs> songs songs they can help you improve your pronunciation of words and at the same time your listening skills. Right? Try to sing without any lyrics. <laughs> <laughs> and also for the suggestion just like what i've said a while ago make it connected with the student because i had a trainee yesterday uh the student is a girl and then she asked no no the, the student is a boy and then she gave her the suggestion of uh watch frozen like that <laughs> oh no <laughs> he I'm won't like that yeah <laughs> I really like that, but it's a boy, right? Sort of connected with the, the student because why are you suggesting the to, the to the student who is a boy to watch Frozen, right? <laughs> Girl, make it to the make it connected with the with the student's uh, gender. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know a lot of uh, movies or uh, what they call this children's show about boys, but you can search on the web, right? There are a lot of things that you can search. But girls, yes, there are a lot. Frozen, Barbie, like that. <laughs> even Dora the Explorer or Peppa Pig. Yes. <laughs> so they can watch these things. But for the boys, you have to think. <laughs> I don't know anything. <laughs> okay. Next is check if there are questions and clarifications. Yes, this is a simple question, but you have to ask it whether you like it or you like it. Do you have any question? It is graded. And then give them the final reward, make it special, and ask for your own reward. And uh, yes, um, give them a lot of rewards because uh, tons of rewards so that they will give you five stars too. <laughs> yes, the, the, I, I heard uh, I got reprimanded yeah, by my manager that uh, I am teaching my trainees not to ask for a five-star reward. <laughs> I didn't know that it was mandatory <laughs> to ask for yes. a five-star reward, right? You know what, teacher? In my six years of teaching, I never asked for a five-star reward from my students. Why? Because, really? you know, yes, I never ask for a five-star reward, but I always get. <laughs> because if you know, you know yourself, you did a great job. You did your job, right? Even if you, you don't ask for it, the student will give it to you. But if you know yourself, you didn't do a great job. Even if you ask for it, I will not give it my. <laughs> right? <laughs> So you have to make sure that you deserve what you're asking for, okay? I evaluated the teacher here before. She was so boring the whole the whole twenty five minute uh, the twenty minute the whole twenty minute of the class, and then for the last five minutes she was asking for a five star reward. Oh God, it's like it's kind of unethical to ask for something that you don't deserve, right? Make sure that you deserve what you're asking for, okay? Next is number five, closing and end it politely with a smile. Yes, students talk sometimes. <laughs> yeah, they are, pain, <laughs> they are pain in the ass. <laughs> but we have to end it with a smile because ending it yes. rudely, it's an automatic fail to the QA evaluators. Okay, any questions? 
clarifications, violent reactions for the class flow. Is everything clear? Um, oh, I have a question. Mm. Uh, because I didn't prepare a song, but I can mm -hmm. sing. But mm. it have any music? <laughs> <I> can... <laughs> oh, no, that's okay if you're a good singer. Mm. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> I will allow you as long I as I, I heard the song. Yes, you, you can sing, sing for that. I will grade you for that. Okay, any more questions okay. before we start the pre-demo? Uh, 